Hello, internet. Sense. Welcome to another episode of the Ghost. How are we doing, Mike? How, hello, everyone. Um, uh, Mike, how are you? I'm all right. I'm. All right. I'm I've got me. Uh, I've, I've got me hot chocolate, so I'm. I'm quite happy. You do live the dream. So, um, a good friend of mine, uh, did, but um, they have a sitcom out and just released all the episodes there called Thicketum. So that's worth checking out. Have a look at that. Very f- for stuff though. But what I wanted to show. So uh, I am on page eighty-eight of uh of my script i'm going to share with you the last line of what i finished on so action line as they pull away m looks frustrated m shit now what as her glance moves around the area she spies a jcb packed up m stop the car oh my god i think you're gonna get you're gonna get a call from the producers of eastenders sounds good i'd like to read the rest well you, you haven't read the last one i sent you <laughs> Shall we introduce our guest? Absolutely. Casting director Martin Gibbons, who I've got, uh, is currently locked up in my basement. <laughs> and, uh, and actor Tina Harris. Um, welcome both. Uh, Tina, let me start with you. How, how are things? I'm very well, thank you. I'm very grateful uh, for the sunshine at the moment. I've spent a lot of time gardening and just being outside going for walks, so that's been great. Yes, and I'm well, healthy, thank God. Martin, how are you? I'm um, I'm busier than I've ever been, Lee. Like yeah, literally certainly. busier than I've ever been in my entire life. I've realised that my job is a massive dos, and having three children at home, a hundred percent of the time, is like just a nightmare. It's, I've become a full-time teacher. We have a full timetable schedule even though it's easter holidays now and the teachers haven't sent anything home we haven't told the kids that it's easter holiday <laughs> we, are, we are cracking on it's just it's as it's as busy as i've ever been lee uh, the first thing is our isolation playlist tina do you have a song for us i do yes and i've chosen uh, baggy trousers by madness okay <laughs> why why because when I was growing up, me and my best friend used to have what we called a mod night at her parents when they went out on a Thursday. We used to have the lights down, swing the you know the light fitting thing, and just dance around to madness. And it's one of those songs that if I hear it now, I just can't sit down. I have to get up and start dancing. <laughs> So, so you and your friend used to swing from the light fitting? No, we used to swing. That's what she said. No, no. That's what I heard. I didn't mean that. I meant we used to swing it and then dance beneath. Uh, Pro- proper light fittings in the 80s, though, weren't they? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. None of this IKEA yeah. rubbish. You no. couldn't swing from an IKEA light fitting. Yeah, yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> Martin, what have you got for us? Well, I was going to go for um, Trapped by Colonel Abrahams, um, but then I realised that was just a terrible joke. So I went for Walls Come Tumbling Down by the Style Council. Why? Because it's a tune. And there's a, a programme. I don't know if you remember. It's a programme that's about, probably about 10 years old now. Maybe No, probably not even that. Probably eight years old. Uh, called Party Animals. It was like a political sort of parliamentary thing. I had Matt Smith in before he was the doctor. Um, and Andrew Buchan and it was just that's a brilliant cast and there's this one scene where <laughs> they're brothers and they just dance around the flat to walls come tumbling down I think it's after their, one of their mum or their dad dies and it's just like it's just one of those songs that just makes you want to just go ah! and just go mad and I think if, if I'm in isolation that's what I want I just want I want to just dance just Do go you- for it do you think that when we when we're allowed out again, do you think everybody's going to go mental? Yes, I remember a bank holiday back when I lived in the northeast. I remember a bank holiday when it, I can't the sun must have been out all summer, and everyone just went nuts, like proper nuts, like not normal nuts, just proper nuts. And it was like people like there was no. It's like now. You went to the supermarket, not that I've been into a supermarket, but if you did, and there was just no beer. It had all gone. Everyone had got the beer, and everyone was taking in the beer. I think it, well, I think people, I mean, I've I found personally there's a lovely level of connection with people that you haven't perhaps seen for a while, and we're doing lots of, some of my friends, we're doing Zoom chats and FaceTime and all that, which perhaps you wouldn't have time to do normally, which is lovely. But I do think when there's a chance for everyone to get together and meet up and just go out to that. And for me, the cinemas, I miss the cinema. They you can watch it at home. It's just not the same. I'm, when this all ends, I'm not sure I will go mad. 
I you, you 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 said do you think people were oh gold? okay all right all right Fair enough. <laughs> I, I agree with you entirely <laughs> i think i will go personally to a pub and i will not be going near the bar i'll be staying <laughs> two meters away from everyone for yeah. the foreseeable yeah. maybe for the rest yeah. of my life yeah uh <laughs> which, would suit, which, which would suit me and i think would suit you as well because the yeah, less I... the less interaction with people the better as far as i can <laughs> say <laughs> yeah people are shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my job is to see people generally as a rule. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That is a that is a problem. Yeah, but I I actually worked with uh, <laughs> a director and a producer from London not so long ago, and um, and I, I was doing the casting, and people kept on coming in and doing the old handy shaky thing, you know, that I I don't think people should do. Just you know, give me a yeah, hey, high five me or whatever. That's fine, but I. You know, I'm used to disease. Um, and then just go sit down. But they, they were shaking hands with this producer and this this director. And all I know, I, I suddenly noticed they were like doing something under the table. And I was like, what are you doing? And I realized they were doing everyone that shook their hands. They were, san- but, you know, I mean, they, I don't know where they're getting now. They can't get all of it. But <laughs> hands were they? Mm-hmm. Was, was this just before the, the outbreak? Or, no, or... Talking, we're talking like three years ago <laughs> they were like they were fully prepared america they don't shake hands do they at all i had it recently um i was working in london and i had a meeting for something else and i went to see the guy and we just instinctively shook hands and we both said are we supposed to do this and we kind of we were kind of already doing it but tina i've had people like recently like we're talking like probably a month two months ago come into a casting and like that I've met before, like loads of times in casting, it's like like you, for example, like someone who I know quite well from casting yeah. and stuff like that. And they've come over and given me a hug and kissed me on the cheek and the stuff. And I'm I'm a bit like, ooh, no, oh, yeah, not having that. We can't do that every time. That's too much. <laughs> there is an element of to be serious for a second that I do think we all do miss a little bit of that sort of you know certainly with extended mem- like extended people who don't live in your house, for example, that you see. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah passing on the street or whatever you right, stay strange. the distance from yeah yeah strangers yeah. uh that you know you sometimes just want to give them a hug don't you <laughs> yeah. um, just before i got on this call i was watching channel 4 news and they had a, a psychologist from harvard and they said to him this is totally up to date this um they said to him would you I'm, think i'm, I'm you know, buying it anyway because this is good somebody from harvard harvard I mean, yeah. it all sounds good and he had, he had loads of hair and everything it was crap brilliant uh, I definitely would have cast him as a man from Harvard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> luckily, he was. Um, but he is—he was basically saying that actually, no, <laughs> it was like a real. The, the guy asked the question. I think he was expecting a. Yeah, I think things are going to be different in this way and that way. That was my American accent. And he just went, "No, it's not going to be different. People just don't remember. People will forget this happened quite yeah. quickly, and people will go back to how it was." Okay. And that was a bit like. Oh. <laughs> Oh, well. Just look at New Year's resolutions. How many people go, right, that's it, I'm going to do, you know, join the gym and then come March to, like, cancel gym membership because people are really shit <gasps> at those kind of short-term changes. What Tina, what is the most coronavirus thing you have done? Well, I did um, buy my shopping and bring it home and wipe it all with anti-back wipes. Only the things like the tins, because I, I when when it sort of first kicked off and people couldn't get toilet rolls, we got toilet rolls and we went to buy some more and we couldn't get any. But I, the one thing that I really missed was tinned tomatoes. Because I, I cook loads of things with tin tomatoes. And when we were allowed to get, so I haven't stockpiled anything, but when, so there was some pasta eventually, and I, I just bought one packet. But when there were like a shelf full of tin tomatoes, I did buy three tins and I felt quite guilty. But then the worst thing, I think it wasn't the worst thing, it was like what you were saying earlier. I went to the garage to we run out of milk. So I went to the garage and it's got a co op attached to it. And the doors shut. And I was thinking, I actually thought, great, great. I haven't got to go into the shop. I can buy it from the kiosk. So I was really happy in the fresh air. So I'm at the kiosk with my little, you know, chip and pin. And this, um, I don't know if she was a nurse or a care worker or what she was. And, and, you know, fantastic work they're doing. But she came and stood really close to me. So so I was like, it's all swear. I was like, <laughs> I kind of looked at her like she didn't move away. So I just went... Back off. I held my breath. I just held my breath. How long did you hold your breath for? Uh, not long. I had got the milk and it was just the case of putting the little things. So I've been in and I've taken my own anti-back wipes. 
So I'd wiped the um, basket, he was shaking his head. Oh, yeah. I bet you've done the same. <laughs> and I went round and, uh, and when I got it home, I'd only done it the once with this big shot that I did, and I just wiped like the chicken, the outside of the chicken, the cans, and the fruit, I just, you know, put it in the bowl. It was all packaged, so I put it in the bowl, and then I washed my hands after that. But I have got, my eldest son has asthma, so I do have to be careful. And my husband has a um, angina, so I do have to be a little bit careful. Fair enough. Martin, what's the most coronavirus <clears throat> thing you've done? Banana bread. Full stop. <laughs> but now you've made banana bread. Yeah. Yeah. Did Literally. you eat it? Yeah. Literally, <laughs> never, never made banana bread in my entire life, ever. Never never felt the urge to. I, but, but what's that about? Why? I mean, I know why we did it. It's because we did one of those. I still haven't been to a shop in uh, four weeks or whatever. We've just done everything like online. And so we did, we did one of those orders where you get like a massive amount of fruit and veg and stuff like that. And it was a shed load. Am I allowed to swear, by the way? It was a shit load of bananas. Um, and so we were like, what the, f- what the fuck do you do with all these bananas? So we made banana bread i mean I, I just when we were doing it we knew it was a cliche made some soup as well i made a pea and ham soup i've yeah. never made soup in my entire life opening it, opening opening a tin and all <laughs> is, not the same. is that not the same, <laughs> it's not the oh. same thing. oh that i haven't made, I haven't made soup. sorry <laughs> my, my bad how many toilet rolls have you got in the house uh so we uh do a tesco shop like online every whatever and Tesco's for the last, I reckon the last two years, there is a point to this, by the way, have done like, what you buy nine, I think it's six pounds. If you get another nine, it's only like three pounds more, right? So we've, for years, for years we've we've had the space in the bathroom where the toilet paper lives. And for years, we've gone from like loads of toilet paper to no toilet paper, then back to loads of toilet paper. Unfortunately, we're at the point of no toilet paper when everyone else wanted toilet paper. And we were like this, we've got no toilet paper. So we haven't, we didn't have any toilet paper for ages. Like for what? ages. How long? Whoa, whoa, whoa. How, how long? <laughs> long, enough, long enough that we were down to using a box of tissues. But then since then, we did, uh, we did one order where we managed to get four toilet rolls. And then we did uh, Tesco's uh, online order. Now, I will say, I know we're not supposed to do a Tesco's online order, but we booked it so long previous that we haven't heard new advice that you're not supposed to take the online things. So on Saturday, we picked up a, a nine pack. So we're fine for now, thanks, Lee. Thanks for asking. You, you could have just said nine and we could have moved on. <laughs> Tina, I reckon you've got a lot. I haven't got a lot. I don't know because I was when it first happened. I was in London because I was working there, and I was staying in a house with two other women. And one of the women came downstairs. <laughs> she said, "I think we need to forage for toilet rolls." And I, was like, I said, "What are you talking about?" And uh, so she was the one that first told me there were no toilet rolls. So I went out and bought four toilet rolls for this house. But then when I came home, my husband had already got some before the pack set out. So we've not really, actually, I've not checked for a while. We've got a cupboard on the landing where we keep them. Just just so I can make a guesstimate, you know, how big is this cupboard that you keep these toilet rolls in? It's, it's very thin and narrow, and it's got the hooves and the ironing board, and it's got a top bit, and it's, so it's got a little toilet roll kind of sized space. Like Peter Crouch. Not many. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. All right. How many have you got, got We'll go with eight. How many have I got? Um, we we I bought a four pack yesterday. So I, th- I I and we did have two rolls, a roll upstairs and a roll downstairs. So I reckon Ooh, we're down to downstairs four. toilet. <laughs> yeah. Someone's had a good year. Living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about you, Michael? Um, I'm kind of like you, where we always have like a, a running overstock. Um, so I think we've got about 18. What? How many? About 18. Aldi do like Regular a mind. massive thing where it's like 20 <laughs> odd for like two quid or something. So we just buy like Eight. one of them every month and just always have a million. 18? Yeah. 18 puts you um, third in the leaderboard. Really? If I was a toilet roll manufacturer and I would have gone, if I was Mr. Andrex, I would have been like, this is the perfect time to just put out a tweet saying, People are st- people that can't buy toilet rolls. Everyone goes. Ah! Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Hang on, you could be, you could be onto something there. Yeah. Like, could get everything else, but couldn't get any bloody pasta. I had a chat with a woman who I've sort of seen from a, a mum at school, and I said to her, "I'm looking for the pasta." And she was like, "It's gone." How many monologues have you watched in the last forty-eight hours? None. 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 Really? You just not. You just not on social media a lot. No, I am. I've been writing. So I, I've got. I write something with somebody, and we've had a great a few hours chatting about characters today, and having a lot of fun doing that. I'm sorry to be ignorant, but I don't know what the monologue thing is. What is them? Is it a thing that people put in monologues? <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get. We'll get. We'll get to it's that like, in a minute. It's like an actor that speaks by themselves. So you know, oh, I thought you'd know. <laughs> Martin, how many monologues have you watched in the last 48 hours? <laughs> no, no. Oh, is that a virtual fist pump? Or a, the, what? Would you like to know how many monologues I've watched since isolation happened? Since basically, I tell you, since schools shut, how many how many monologues I've watched? Since you None. began casting, None. how Yay. many? <laughs> not the one. <laughs> Why not, Martin? Because I've told you already, I've answered this question. Okay. I have been busier than I've <laughs> ever been. I have had not. Ch- I, have, I haven't had time to do anything. I'm sure. I I will get round to it at some point. I will get round to doing like my job, and something like my other job, my casting job, at yeah. some point. But that time has not arrived yet. Okay. I love watching my friends and actors doing great work, but I just don't want to watch online monologues at the moment. <laughs> but I, I, I haven't said that. I did think last night I have got a friend um, called Nina Rubessa who's put out these like tiny little snippet short little films that she's made. And it's literally the first one she was walking down the street and saying, everyone's scared. It's isolation time. And basically it was the punchline was, why not call it genius time and see what you can come up with? Martin, how many yes. units of alcohol have you had in the last 48 hours? So I've had a glass of wine earlier. And... Uh, well, in 48 hours, not 24 yeah. no, hours. No, 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 no. You've, you've literally caught me at the most un-alcohol moment. If you'd asked me that on Sunday evening, I would have been worried about the number. But Monday and Tuesday are my nights off. Uh, so in the Monday and Tuesday, not one drop of alcohol other than licking my hand from sanitizer. So that's it. However, I take your point, I think what you're saying my alcohol consumption has risen somewhat. We don't want to like be bulk buying from like, don't want to go to Tesco and buy like 20 bottles of Prosecco, but I'll buy six from there and six from somewhere else and six from somewhere else. I've done a beer order, I've done two beer orders because I'm I'm part of a beer club thing that sends me beer. um, And I've done an extra beer order. It's it's a necessity at the moment, isn't it? (laughs) It is when you're homeschooling three kids. Now I know why peaches drink so much. Yeah. My parents, my parents are both teachers. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know it. I had a one of those big things of San Miguel that was good two nights ago, and I made this massive bonfire. I've been doing a lot of so I made this big bonfire in the garden, and I don't think I've made a bonfire for years. So I had that outside of the bonfire, which was great, and I had a glass of wine after that. And then last night I had two glasses of wine, and I just got a little glass of prosecco. Tina, what were you working on before we all got shut down? So I was in um, my first West End show doing um, the Seagull Jamie Lloyd Company, which was brilliant. I was literally about to go on stage half an hour before going on when the producers came down and said. <sighs> And it was my, it would have been my West End day. You're joking. No, no, I'm not. Oh, I'm but so anyway, sorry, it, was, it was such a lovely experience. But they have said we're going to reopen, but we don't know when. This was Seagull uh, starring Amelia Clark. Yeah, and it was, it's such, honestly, hand on heart, it's such a brilliant show. They're, they're superb. I love, they're all in this great big packing case with bare feet, wearing natural, normal, everyday clothes that have been designed to suit the actors that are playing the roles. It's all done with head mics. So it's like a film, but on stage. And it's rather than playing it up and out, it's playing to each other in the box. And Annie Reese has adapted the play to make it very modern. And it's, it's beautiful. Oh, wow. Look. all these people in this world it makes it so i mean i've seen various productions of the seagull before and this makes it so clear they're all there stuck like seven islands well. they're all stuck on this island together all wanting to be loved 
and it's about all the conflicts and it makes everything so beautifully clear and it's all coming from them themselves rather than putting on some you know victorian frock and that sounds it, amazing it, tina i'd love to see that it's been a great three and a half solid months of a good weekly wait, which you know not yeah. always the case and i was like i was planning this holiday and this holiday yeah. and i'm gonna do this but and now it's kind of gone at the moment, but fingers crossed it comes back. Okay. Yeah, just like a, it was a TV commercial I was working on got cancelled, but, you know, <laughs> it's not the end of the world, is it? <laughs> These things happen. I know it's well, uh, it's it's sad for the people that were involved and stuff like that, but actually we, we sort of had a, an inkling it was going to happen. I had one film the week that uh, it, it managed to get the filming done just before everything shut down, had another one that had just finished the week before, so that sort of all sort of, bunched up to that had a couple of castings that i was lined up to do but they just never never happened but um i'm working on a, sh a, a sitcom at the moment a tv sitcom pilot thing that um is still hopefully going to happen but again you know being put back and pushed back and pushed back but all these jobs will happen or they won't i've had a couple of calls from producers asking me to sort of for fees and stuff like that for jobs that they're lining up so i can only imagine if it does if things do open up again it's going to be mad busy for a certain amount yeah. of time in, commercial, in commercials purely. My job will be pretty mental for a couple of weeks and stuff. But Well, the, there are slots to fill. And and the way that the economics of everything's working, people will be wanting to advertise more because they'll be needed to sell their products more because companies will be in, a lot of companies will be in trouble and a lot of companies will, you know. It'll be, inter it'll be interesting to see where we are when, it, when this comes out. What, what's your, what's your, uh, and I'll come to you in a moment, Tina, but what, what's your instinct on that? There's going to be a lot of people who can't afford to do it anymore, who literally just, you know, who this is going to, is going to mean that they have to do other things and whatever. So I, th I think on the other side of this, there's the, maybe the business, the, the, the business needs to look at how we support the community, how we support working class actors, because unfortunately acting's already a little bit like, you know, those who have can do. And those who who haven't can't. So you get this elite set of um, actors that are all, you know, rich and you know privileged, and then they carry on being rich and privileged because they're the ones that can afford to be, you know, do acting and stuff like that. And so I wonder whether it'd be interesting to see how how much we're going to lose, you know, the working class actors possibly, and how much we're going to need to support those people, and how much the industry as a whole, not just commercials but like in theatre and stuff like that it's going to have to look at how we support the theatres because loads of the theatres are going to be in trouble depending on how things you know carry mm -hmm. on in this at this level I know it's all doom and gloom what I'm saying but it's the facts of the matter are that that financially is the most you know obviously the health is the most important thing of people but then from that point on you're basically looking at the financials of all of this and it's it's worrying and on a practical level I really hope that this isn't an excuse now for production companies to start using self tapes as a thing that they do because it's basically it just well <laughs> selfishly from my point of view it just means that we're no longer required as much but it just also you're losing that skill so that's what we you know why we, we this is a human industry where humans talk to humans and it's a human thing that we do and i think that's that's absolutely vital in what in our in our business Tina, I saw you screw your face up when uh, Martin mentioned self tapes. Yeah, I just hope that's not going to happen as well because it's. I do get I get a lot of self tapes to do, and it isn't. It, you know, the ones I get the job is when I've just done it quickly and not thought about it. And I, no matter how much I might say to my poor husband who always does the <laughs> he literally goes, he literally actually goes self tape and he went, he goes, oh no, and I'm like, please don't say that. It puts me into a negative. <laughs> so the ones I do quickly are the ones I tend to get that I don't think about. But even if I do them quickly, I've got about so many takes, even though I plan to just do a few. And I just feel that, that there's nothing beats actually being in the room with someone. Because like you say, a director can give you three different ways of, to, of doing it, maybe a curveball, maybe push you. And you just have that rapport, which is just so nice, isn't it? Maybe younger actors, some actors that have got less experience kind of, I have friends getting really stressed about I don't know which way to do it. So you can do it in a couple of ways, can't you? But sometimes they only want one take. It's like you never know what they want, and it's just hard. It's, it's nice to do them sometimes, but I love meeting people much more than yeah, totally. self-taping. 
theatre, I would be a bit worried about because, like they say, people are losing a lot of money, aren't they? Companies are losing a lot of money with these seats not being sold. But TV stuff is kind of being, that I know of, is being pushed back maybe till September at the moment, and it's still not definite. I think one thing that's happened is, I think a lot of casting directors doing these, um, I think Spotlight's been doing a lot of things, haven't they, with people. They've hopefully got to meet a lot of actors that they wouldn't normally have met, maybe. Maybe that's a yeah. positive thing. Yeah, true. I think there's been a nice sense of community amongst actors. It really feels like a lot of the time, like our Seagull company, everyone's been on WhatsApp and pulling together and other groups of actors that I've been involved in different groups and things. There's been a real sense of family and community. That's been lovely. I hope people don't try and reduce actors' pay. I don't know if that might I just thought that now. I just wondered if that might be a thing that might happen. I don't know. I don't know. Well, it's know. interesting. I just hope you start yeah. It's interesting that you say that because I think I think there are a few people, sort of actors and creatives, and you know, to sort of backstage and crew and things that are a little bit worried about that. From the certainly from the point of view of um, how contracts might change. I always come back to the, uh, the 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 plumber thing. Yeah, someone's a plumber and say exactly. Come, just come around my house and do um, just fix our tap for me. It'd be a good experience for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you get some no. lovely pictures for your website. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, this is this is our job. This is what we do. I know. What piece of advice would would you give them, or would you give yourself if you were starting out now? Start making your own work. Say, for example, you're not getting castings. You're you're obviously being productive, and you're keeping your mind occupied. You're being creative, and maybe you're creating something that might go on YouTube, might be picked up by someone. You never know. We've we've, we've written this. <laughs> <laughs> this comedy a few years ago and we've had a lot of interest from different people and the BBC were going to take it we don't know what's going on so I'm always trying to pitch it but I never get time because say I've got a week and I think okay I'm going to really push this then suddenly the phone rings and I've got to go for a, a meeting or I get a role play or a commercial casting or something happens and I never can do it so now I thought right we're really going to work hard so we have and we've gone into real depth about the characters in a depth we hadn't done before and it's kind of made me see it from another side from rather than just being an actor in it just the side of casting people and just what it's just different it gives you a round of view I think if you can make your own work do not give in find another way to earn a, a crust you know whether it's i don't know whatever people can do um but i wouldn't take a full time job i'd just say do as much of other stuff that you can do and be creative there's a couple of things one i think the showcase thing is an interesting one i think what they should do is fill their showcase piece not let it go to waste i just think that there's so so much work has gone into these showcases that i think people should be using the stuff that they've done and just putting that somewhere no my advice is be really good just be good be a good actor that's my advice because if you're a good actor and you work hard you will achieve success you know the best the best writers the best actors in the world are people that work hard they work their asses off just be good and listen listen and be good when you're in a casting listen. session just listen just listen, because I'm. We'll 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 tell you everything you need to know, and from that point on, you've just got to use your ability and just be good. That's a terrible advice. The truth. <laughs> no, we don't know absolutely, but it's all you know. That is totally up there as well with just be nice. Just be. Yeah. Oh nice. God. Just be, be nice. nice. The other thing. One, yeah, be nice. Yeah. Be nice, because even if you're not good that day, because whatever, I'll bring you back in because you were nice. <laughs> but if you were. If you were good, but an arse. Yeah. I, I need to know what's in Tina's cupboard. What's My in cupboard? that top drawer? Oh, yeah. top oh drawer? I've, I've done what you did. I'm going to show you. I've turned it round. It's like a little... Um... It's my son. My son Giuseppe has left home, has left all his clothes, some of his clothes. Oh. Oh. So I... This is, this is now my office, but it's a right mess. The top one. Which is in the top one. It. What about the top, the top one? What's in the top, the top one? The top one. The top one's just what? I've got a hat. Oh, there's a hat. Oh, I should have done with that. Uh, well, it's I'm in my my baby's room. So uh, if you look over here, we've got uh, just baby clothes, the cutest pair of shoes oh, ever. Marvellous. They're Lovely. just from Andrea Kazelas. You know Andrea? She's a brilliant actor, a lover. <laughs> and she got us these because she knows I love trainers. And I just, these are my favourite thing in the world. 
and I just oh so good. Um, it's nice, it's l- little yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little boots. <laughs> Favorite moment. I haven't got. Do you know what I've thought about this? I haven't got one. I've got loads of different ones. So I can't say. Just show off. One. <laughs> no, no, I don't think that. I think that I've got since nineteen ninety one, so I'm old. But I've got lots of jobs. That, I tell you what, I really I, I love working on things that are based on true stories. Very often, so I've done a couple of those that I really liked. I got to play Lady Bird Johnson in the summer, so that was fab because I never you didn't know anything about her, and she was a really interesting woman. And I also love comedy, and I did a one. I did a low hello in Manchester at the Lowry quite a long time ago. And there was one time, a few nights on the trot, actually, and this is unprofessional, but it's just something that makes me feel full of joy. We were on stage, Renee and I was playing Yvette, and we had the blow-up Hitler, and we just lost it, like, night after night for a whole week, like, laughing our heads off, and the whole, or the more we laughed, the more the audience laughed. And I just love things like that. So true stories and um, when it's someone's passion project or it's about a wonderful person, Four things that make me laugh a lot. <laughs> Martin? Four things. Okay. All right. You're only supposed to have quick. one. Very quick. Very quick. One, meeting this young lad actor who came in for a casting. And then he did this. He just got the gum tree job that I've just done. And I was like, brilliant. You are a legend. Two, the boy from the British Heart Foundation job. He's a guy called a little boy called Mikey Pickles. And did he yes. look up the commercial? Right, I've he's seen brilliant. It, I've seen it. I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, Marvin on a, on Monday. Marvin he, was. Ah, uh, oh, Marvin's the dad. Of course he yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I cast him. Um, he came in and with his twin brother, right? And they both just the moment they came in, they just got it. And and I was like watching them in the casting, just going like, this is that moment where you're just seeing someone that's just doing it perfectly and his twin brother did an equally good job and they only recalled Mikey and they didn't recall his twin brother and I felt really harsh with his twin brother they were like the spit of each other so I can sort of why they didn't <laughs> then doing a play at the National Theatre the one I directed a play that in Manchester called The Manchester Project and then we took it to the National Theatre with Home that just that's just me just bragging because that was just unbelievable like so much like this fucking directing a play at the National Theatre. <gasps> uh, and then the other one is obviously doing JB Shorts with you, Lee. Oh. <laughs> no, it absolutely isn't. <laughs> I, I do, I, I, in, in all seriousness, I do love doing JB Shorts. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. there's a certain, like, you know, working with, you, as a director, you don't get to, or a casting director, you don't get to work with the directors or casting directors most of the time. You, but it's quite a, like a soul, soul job, if you want. And obviously, when you're directing a play, you get to work with your cast and crew. But what's really nice about JB, sorry, this is going old school now, isn't it? Uh, but what's really nice is that you get to work with other directors and other writers and other company of actors and stuff like that. And I just think there's something really sweet about it. I love JB Shorts as well. Yeah. Thank you both. It's been an absolute pleasure. Wonderful to see you. Thank you for coming on our little show. You could tell us. I've got a quiz starting. (laughs) What time does the quiz start? Sports start at nine o'clock with the family. What, Zoom quiz? Yeah. Well, you get yourself up. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it's fine. I was, I was, I'm enjoying this, but I've got a Zoom quiz. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll... <laughs> we watch this. Look, we watch this going mad with people saying, "I can't get into the Zoom." Yeah, I can't get into well, it. then, well, thank you so much. For... I enjoyed that a lot. Thanks very much. Um, I'd like to do it, let's do it again sometime. Yeah, let's definitely do it. Again we, might, sometime. we might be doing this for months. Yeah. <laughs> we will. We will be doing this for months. Everybody, <laughs> see you, see you. Hey, Angie, take care. Bye. Bye. Feel, feel free to log off. Um, l- lots of love to both of you. Um, okay, and, and I'll speak to you soon. Um, okay, so on Monday, uh, very excited. My old mate, um, Lewis Emmerich, is coming in. You'll know him from uh, back in the day in Brookside yeah. um, and also from Corrie and Layer Cake. Yeah. Um, uh, coming in with Lewis is uh, Andrew Ashford, uh, Jeeves and Worcester, Full Monty Play. Um, uh, he'll be coming in. Then on Wednesday next week, we have the wonderful Rebecca Ryan, who you will know from Shameless and uh, more recently Casualty, uh, along with Matt Ganley, actor-musician. Please like, please subscribe, please hit that notification bell, share this with your friends. Have a good rest of the week, everybody. Um, I hope you find your toilet roll um, in plentiful supply and your tin tomatoes in your cupboard where they should be. Adios from the bunker. We'll